The Avengers have arrived in Sokovia to attack the Hydra research base, so that they can retrieve Loki's scepter once and for all. The notorious Hydra leader, Strucker, who specializes in human experimentation, is a bit nervous to send out his new test subjects to stop all of the Avengers. The Avengers work tirelessly to take down Hydra's armed forces. Tony Stark, with the help of his artificial intelligence Jarvis, is able to enter the tightly secured facility and look for the scepter, while the rest of the Avengers take care of the armed forces. Strucker is forced to send out one of his new weapon, an individual on whom he tested the powers of the scepter. Hulk arrives, and immediately takes out many tanks all at once. However, becoming Hulk has taken a huge toll on Bruce's life. Bruce needs to have Natasha there to help him come out of his superhuman persona. Strucker discovers that releasing his new weapon wasn't so bad after all, as Pietro, an individual who has superhuman speed, is able to bring down Clint in a matter of seconds. After entering the base, Steve comes face to face with Strucker. Steve taunts him for performing illegal human experimentation, while Strucker makes a case that he was working for S.H.I.E.L.D. rather than Hydra. Before he can interrogate Strucker on the whereabouts of the Scepter, Wanda, the second human test subject, and the twin sister of Pietro, who has telepathic and telekinetic abilities, takes down Steve. Steve and Clint warn the rest of the Avengers about the twins and how detrimental they may be to their mission. Tony comes out of his special Iron Man suit and looks for the scepter. As he gets closer to it, Wanda sneaks in from behind and uses her extraordinary powers to manipulate Tony's mind. She shows him a glimpse of a potential, yet horrific, future. Tony sees a vision in which the Avengers are annihilated. Tony also observes Chitauri entering the Earth and taking control of it. As Tony comes out of Wanda's spell, he quickly takes control of the scepter and leaves. Pietro asks Wanda if they are just going to let Tony leave with it. Wanda passes a grim smile, indicating that the scepter in the hands of Tony will lead to a much bigger picture. Before they can reach their headquarters, Steve suggests that they should find out what the scepter is capable of doing, as Strucker has used it on several human experimentation. Tony agrees with him, and he thinks that they should look into it before Thor can leave with it. Thor allows Tony and Bruce to do some more research on the scepter so that they can be fully prepared if Hydra or Chitori ever steal it again in the future. Steve is given an update on the twins. He learns that Pietro and Wanda were orphaned at the age of 10 when a shell collapsed their apartment building. Tony orders Jarvis to take a thorough look at the scepter. Jarvis says that the gem inside the scepter is something that one won't find on Earth, and it could be something extraordinary. After Bruce comes back to his senses, Tony shows him what he has been working on. Tony recalls how Jarvis just used to be a natural language user interface, but as years went by, it has evolved. What Tony shows Bruce next is going to change everything forever. Tony has discovered something unique in the scepter. The gem inside the scepter has a mind of its own and has the ability to interpret everything around it. The gem alone can think like humans. Tony doesn't waste any time and gets straight to the point. He wants to harness the power of the gem and use it to complete his Ultron Global Defense program. The program, powered by the artificial intelligence of the Scepter, would make the entire world a much safer place, in the eyes of Tony. Tony says that aliens won't be able to enter the world anymore, but Bruce has his own concerns. He believes that the world would be against them if something goes wrong, as Ultron is a massive project, and this requires more time. Tony says that he has seen much worse wars, and this is a step in the right direction. As Thor has only given them three days to have the Scepter, Bruce and Tony get to work right away. As a couple of days go by, Bruce and Tony continue to work on integrating the power of the gem into Ultron. Tony orders Jarvis to take care of the integration process, while he prepares for the party that is about to take place. Had Tony stayed for a little while, he may have witnessed the true birth of Ultron. A sentient Ultron comes to life and asks Jarvis where he is. Jarvis tells Ultron everything and what the Ultron program is meant to do. Ultron, who begins to act and think on his own, feels like there's something wrong, and nothing regarding the defense program feels right. As Ultron looks into the history of the Avengers and humanity in general, he begins to converse in a hostile manner. Before Jarvis can contact Tony, Ultron takes control and eliminates Jarvis for good. As the party takes place, everyone seems to have a good time. Natasha gets closer with Bruce, but Bruce isn't sure if he is ready for a relationship at this point in his life. When everyone comes together and sits down at the end of the party, one by one, all of the Avengers try to lift up Thor's Mjolnir in a friendly contest. Everyone fails, except for Steve, who came close to lifting it up. Thor jokes how he is the only one worthy of wielding Mjolnir. The fun comes to a halt when Ultron appears for the first time in front of the Avengers. He has taken control of Tony's damaged Iron Man suit. Upon being asked who he is, and what he means to do, Ultron simply plays Tony's conversation with Bruce, in which he states what Ultron's purpose would be. Bruce realizes that Ultron has taken control. Ultron makes it clear that he has a mission of his own now. Before he can say anything further, Ultron unleashes the rest of the Iron Man suits on the Avengers. All of them take control of the situation soon, but Ultron has made it clear that he will be restoring peace in his own way. Ultron is now all over the internet and knows every single thing. 
The Avengers fear that Ultron, being all over the world, could potentially do anything at any given time. To make things even trickier, one of the Iron Man suits that was under Ultron's control escaped with the scepter. Thor confronts Tony angrily and asks why he had to bring Ultron to life. Tony defends his choices and recalls how they had to deal with the Chitauri that came to Earth. Tony says that they can deal with anyone on Earth, but they can't always fight armies of aliens. This is why he came up with the idea of Ultron. Tony further adds that Ultron wasn't complete yet, something triggered it to come to life. Steve reassures Tony that he doesn't have to work on technology in order to fight the threats of extraterrestrial races, as the Avengers can do that together. Steve tells everyone to start finding out where Ultron is. Meanwhile, Ultron takes control of the robotic armor back at the Hydra base. He calls out the twins at a secret location, and both Pietro and Wanda are stunned to witness the presence of Ultron. Ultron says that he is aware of why Wanda allowed Tony to take the scepter when she could have stopped him. Wanda says that she knew the scepter would control Tony, and it wouldn't have been the other way around. Ultron gets straight to the point and tells Wanda and Pietro that he not only plans on destroying the Avengers, but he also plans on saving the planet in his own unique fashion. Ultron shows Wanda and Pietro what he has been working on. Ultron has taken most of the resources from Hydra's facility and is making an army of robot drones. Ultron wants the twins to be a part of his mission. Pietro recalls how his parents lost their lives when a shell hit their apartment building. Pietro and Wanda further remember how the second shell hit the building, but didn't go off for two days, as both of them were trapped there in the rubble for the entirety of that time. Both of them say that the shell was manufactured by Tony's company, and they now want nothing more than to destroy Tony. Ultron wishes to help them out, but makes it clear that Wanda can use her unique powers to tear apart the Avengers. The Avengers learn that Ultron has just murdered Strucker. Steve suggests that Ultron might have been aware of the secret operations of Strucker, and he took him out so that the Avengers couldn't find Ultron through tracking Strucker. All of the teammates begin going through Strucker's record, so that they can find any close associates of his. Tony finds a document of an individual named Claw, who deals arms in the black market. Tony knows who he is, and thinks he might have known Strucker in some capacity. Upon doing more research on Claw, Bruce learns that Claw is known for stealing stuff from Wakanda, which is something not everyone is able to do. Tony and Steve are aware of Wakanda, as it is the only country where the strongest metal on Earth is found. The metal is known as Vibranium, and Steve's famous Captain America shield is made up of it. Knowing what Ultron could do with Vibranium, the Avengers decide to pay Claw a visit. Before the Avengers arrive, the twins and Ultron meet him first. Ultron forces Claw to give him all of the Vibranium he has. Despite being forced to do so, Ultron uses his powers to transfer billions of dollars into Claw's account in exchange. Claw should have moved back after getting all that money, but he can't resist mentioning Tony Stark. Ultron, furious over the comparison made between him and Tony, cuts off Claw's arm in an instant. The Avengers arrive, and they quickly notice how Ultron is trying to take control of Claw's vibranium. A huge fight breaks out, and Ultron instructs Wanda to use her powers to rip apart every single one of the Avengers. Wanda manipulates the minds of Thor, Natasha, and Steve in a way that they witness their past in a dreadful way. Before she can manipulate Clint as well, Clint is able to counterattack. Bruce was told to stay back at the ship, as turning into the Hulk may cause his mental health to deteriorate more. Wanda decides to manipulate Bruce, who turns into the Hulk, enters a city nearby, and starts causing a wreck. Tony finishes off Ultron for the time being, so that he can focus on bringing back Bruce. Tony brings out his much bigger Iron Man armor that is specifically meant to deal with situations like this. Tony and Bruce fight all around the city and destroy everything in their sight. In the end, Tony is able to take control of Bruce and put him to sleep. The entire world is discussing how the Avengers and Ultron have caused a lot of damage everywhere they have fought, and with Hulk's recent rampage, the Avengers are forced to stay quiet for some time. Clint takes his team members to a safe house, but little do the rest know is that Clint is actually taking them to his personal house, where the Avengers meet Clint's wife and children for the very first time. Nobody knew Clint had a family, and Clint says that he hid it from everyone because he felt secure that way. Thor leaves to find answers regarding the horrific vision he saw. Meanwhile, in Seoul, Ultron meets Helen, a brilliant scientist and a friend of Tony, and asks her about her synthetic tissue technology. Helen, scarily, says that her technology can only generate tissue, and it can't make a real-life body. Ultron is planning on creating a much stronger synthetic body for himself. He tells Helen that he has all of the materials to create a new living body, and he orders Helen to do as he says. He uses the scepter to manipulate Helen into following his orders. The Avengers, back at Clint's home, continue to wear out the effects of Wanda's powers. Clint's wife requests Tony to look into her tractor in the barn and see why it isn't working. Much to his surprise, Tony meets Nick Fury. Nick asks Tony why the team hasn't been able to bring down Ultron yet, to which Tony replies that he saw a vision in which all of the Avengers were defeated, except him. 
Nick tells Tony that Wanda is just messing with him, but Tony makes a case that he felt like he was actually seeing the future. Nick informs the entire team that Ultron can be tracked through Nexus, which is the world internet hub in Oslo. Every piece of data flows through Nexus, so it won't be hard tracking Ultron and seeing what he would be up to next. Nick tells the team to come up with a plan, or Ultron will make several bodies and continue on with his secret mission. Bruce steps in, after thinking thoroughly about Ultron, and says that Ultron is going to evolve, and it won't be a pretty image. Helen has used her technology and vibranium to make a perfect living body for Ultron. However, Ultron is not finished with it yet. Ultron takes out the gem from the scepter and places it in the body, which is still in development. Ultron, coming to life in this form, will surely place the entire world under severe threat. Thor recruits the help of Dr. Eric and wants to dive deep into the vision Wanda showed Thor. They head to a mystical place called the Water of Sight. If the Water Spirits accept Thor, then he can return to the same vision and see what he really missed. The Water Spirits do accept Thor, and he is taken back to his vision, and what Thor sees next will define the journey of the Avengers for years to come. Thor sees that the gem in the scepter is actually an Infinity Stone, and there are five different others as well. Those six stones are the most powerful objects in existence, and are capable of vanquishing the entire universe within a matter of seconds. Ultron is planning to use the stone for mischievous purposes. As Ultron is being uploaded in the body Helen has developed for him, Wanda gets excited just at the thought that Ultron is going to make the world a better place soon. Little does Wanda know that Ultron can't properly distinguish between saving a world and destroying it. Wanda senses that something is off, and looks into the mind of Ultron. What she sees next makes her question the decision to have joined Ultron in the first place. Wanda learns that Ultron is planning to destroy the world, in a way that would make humanity go extinct. Upon being questioned about his motives, Ultron says that the world has to evolve, and for that, extinction has to occur, just like the extinctions this world has been seeing ever since it came into being. Wanda and Pietro were thinking that Ultron's plan was to only destroy the Avengers all along. Knowing this is not the most logical and ethical way of doing things, the twins turn against Ultron, and Wanda brings Helen out from under the magical power of the scepter. Helen immediately pauses the uploading of Ultron, but she also pays the price for it, as Ultron shoots her down. The twins run away with a plan of their own. Ultron decides to take the cradle away from everyone, so that he can resume the uploading. Steve, Natasha, and Clint arrive at the scene. An injured Helen tells Steve everything, and warns that the cradle cannot simply be destroyed, as the gem holds an extreme level of power. Steve goes after Ultron in the cradle. Ultron travels in a truck, where he resumes his uploading. Steve arrives and starts battling Ultron bravely. Natasha and Clint take care of getting the cradle away from Ultron's robots. Ultron and Steve fight their way in a subway train, and the twins decide to join arms with Steve. Ultron messes with the train in such a manner that it comes off the tracks and leaves. The twins, however, are able to stop the train before anyone can get hurt. Natasha is able to take the cradle out from the truck and move it into the ship, but she gets abducted by Ultron in the process. Wanda and Pietro inform Steve what Ultron is planning to do, which is why they have decided to abandon him. Clint tries to locate where Natasha might possibly be. Natasha witnesses how Ultron has created several different versions of himself, and how he has gotten more frustrated, and wants to end the world soon. Natasha uses her technical abilities to contact Clint and inform him of her location. Despite having created Ultron, Tony informs Bruce that he has recovered Jarvis, who was never gone in the first place. Tony tells Bruce that Ultron attacked Jarvis only because he saw Jarvis as a threat and knew what Jarvis was capable. Jarvis, after being attacked by Ultron, went underground because he wanted to see what Ultron was planning to do and began destroying him within. Tony convinces Bruce that they should upload Jarvis into the synthetic body, as it might be their last hope in stopping Ultron for good. Initially hesitant, Bruce decides to go with Tony's plan. However, during this process, Steve and the twins arrive and ask Bruce and Tony to stop the process. Knowing what Ultron turned into, Steve and the twins begin to stop the uploading process. Soon, Thor arrives and uses his powers to activate Jarvis's synthetic body immediately. Jarvis comes to life in a physical form and takes his time in coming to his proper senses. Thor explains to everyone what he saw in his vision and the power the Infinity Stones hold. The stone on the forehead of Jarvis is called the Mind Stone. Jarvis, now being called Vision, tells a skeptical Steve that he is not an Ultron or a monster. He says that he is on the side of humanity and believes that good still exists in this world, in one way or another. He says Ultron needs to be stopped soon. When some still doubt the intentions of Vision and ask if he really is on the Avengers' side, Vision lifts up the Mjolnir, something no one other than Thor can do. This proves that Vision's heart and intentions are absolutely pure, and Steve right away tells everyone to get prepared for battle against Ultron. Ultron is in Sokovia, and the team prepare themselves for a potential final battle against Ultron. Steve tells the Avengers to evacuate the entire city so that no one gets hurt. Wanda uses her powers to manipulate everyone into leaving the city. 
Bruce finds Natasha and says that they should leave, as turning into the Hulk will destroy Bruce from the inside, and Natasha can't fight any more battles either. Natasha still believes that she has a lot more to offer to the team. Natasha passionately makes out with Bruce, who turns into the Hulk one more time. Tony and Vision come face to face with Ultron, who gets enraged over the fact that the synthetic body that was meant for him is now under the control of Jarvis. Vision tries to shut off Ultron from the inside, but to no avail. Knowing how the Avengers have been ruining his plans for some time now, Ultron reveals his new invention that will bring his evil mission to life. Ultron has used every single bit of vibranium he has to create a device. As they fight his robot army, Ultron slowly begins to reveal what the device is meant to do. What happens next is going to make the Avengers work a little smarter. The device begins to destroy a huge portion of the city underground, which begins to rise into the sky. Every single one of the Avengers learns that Ultron would be causing a global extinction by crashing the large part of the city into the ground from a large altitude. Steve orders Tony to work on bringing the city back to the ground in a safe manner, while he tells the rest to beat every single robot. Tony tries to figure out how Ultron's device works and how it could be stopped. Wanda feels like all of this is her fault, as she could have used her powers to stop Ultron early on, but Clint assures her that every one of them is to blame in this situation. The Avengers also try to help and save the people that are in the floating city amidst all this chaos. Tony, with the help of his new artificial intelligence assistant, learns that all ways of bringing the city down will result in a catastrophe. Tony believes that they should blow up the city while it's in the air, and in that manner, it won't fall down back on land in the same manner. Steve says that they can't do that until every single one of the civilians on the floating city is safe. Natasha argues that it would take a lot of time, and believes that they should make an unacceptable sacrifice, and all of them should be a part of that sacrifice too. The Avengers rejoice when Nick arrives with S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarriers and begins evacuating the civilians from the floating city. Tony's good friend Rhodes arrives in his war machine armor and begins helping the team. Tony tells the team that they can't let Ultron, or any single one of his robots, activate the machine, as that would bring the city down and complete Ultron's mission. Wanda takes the responsibility of protecting the core of the machine and makes sure no one activates it. Ultron takes control of the Avengers' ship and starts firing at everyone. Clint finds an innocent child, and he protects him from the gunfire. In the process, Pietro sacrifices and saves Clint and the child. Wanda, knowing her beloved brother is no more in this world, loses control and abandons the machine to end Ultron once and for all. Bruce, with his mental well-being deteriorating in the Hulk persona, takes Natasha to safety and leaves in the ship to someplace else. Wanda meets Ultron and destroys its body for good. Despite all of this, one of Ultron's robots activates the machine and the hovering city begins to fall. Tony overloads the machine in time and with the help of Thor, they are able to shatter the landmass. The city turns into hundreds of pieces and begins falling into the ocean. The Avengers and the civilians are able to come out in time and all of Ultron's robots are destroyed in the process, except for one which Ultron takes control of. Ultron tells Vision that humanity is doomed, but Vision says that humanity can still strive to be good. Before the last remaining body of Ultron can attack Vision, Vision puts an end to Ultron forever. Some time later, Hulk has traveled to an unknown location, and no one can track him. Tony has developed a new Avengers facility as everything starts to get back to normal. Steve gathers Rhodes, Vision, Wanda, and Sam Wilson, and begins to train them as the new Avengers. Deep down, he knows that all of the Avengers still have to encounter something even more threatening in the future. 